Well, there it is. Lothering. Pretty as a painting. Ah, so you have finally decided to rejoin us, have you? Falling on your blade in grief seemed like too much trouble, I take it. Is my being upset so hard to understand? Have you never lost someone important to you? Just what would you do if your mother died? Before or after I stopped laughing. Right, very creepy. Forget I asked. Yes, I know. I was just thinking. No wonder it took so long, then. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. I can be friendly when I desire to. Alas, desiring to be more intelligent does not make it so. Anyway, I thought we should talk about where we intend to go first. Go after your enemy directly. Find this man Loghain and kill him. The rest of this business with the treaties can then be done in safety. Yes, he certainly wouldn't see that coming, and it's not like he has the advantage of an army and experience and... I was asked for my opinion and I gave it. If your wish is to come up with reasons why something cannot be done, we will stand here until the Darkspawn are upon us. What do you wish of me? If you must. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Oh, I truly doubt that children would be worth the effort. They are filthy, smelly things full of tears and snot and trouble. That said, I cannot speak for the tastes of my mother. She has, after all, lived a very lengthy time in the wilds and done many things I know nothing of. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is, no, my human form is the only one I possess. Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. Tis a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. There were nights when the wilds called to me, tis true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Oh? Then I have no doubt your people do much to keep their talents well hidden from humans. I wonder if I was to ask one of your keepers, of the origin of their magics, if there would be any relation to what I was taught. I may even ask my mother about it some day, though I doubt she would tell the truth of it even so, such is her way. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? Oh! You're simply full of surprises, little man, aren't you? But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? Beg pardon, then, while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. 
In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally... He was arrested. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Yes? If you must. <laughs> You are very cute to ask so many questions. Really? Perhaps we should be wrapped in ribbons and adorned with flowers. So cute are we, too. <laughs> My mother has been haunted from time to time, yes, by Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. I am unsure. I was too young to understand, and perhaps it was bravado on Flemeth's part, or perhaps she was merely amused. I will never know. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Me? No, I never did any of the killing, until later. And even then, Flemeth was a glutton for that sort of thing. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. You do not know. The zealots use that word for any magic they do not control. The Chantry sees any mages not leashed to the circle of magi as apostates. And apostates could become maleficarum, evil mages that resort to blood magic and become demon-enslaved abominations. It may even be true. Still, those of us who prefer freedom see no reason to submit. Oh, I hope you are not simply being agreeable. It would be a refreshing change. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? <laughs> Sometimes I do wonder the very same thing. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. 
No doubt such a tale has mutated much over time and telling. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. Many centuries before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osin who was her husband and Conobar the jealous Lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife, and Osen agreed. Aye, it was. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement in the first place. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Spirits first, and twas they who slew Conobar. Flemeth did not turn to the demon until... much later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. The demon within her has transformed her into... something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. At times, perhaps... A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. For a time, but one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. 
I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Ah, look how they moan and wail and gnash their teeth. It is sad to watch how helplessly they scurry about. He is charging outlandish prices for things people desperately need. Their blood is filling his pockets. It is only survival of the fittest. All of these Cretans would do the same in his shoes, given the chance. You, miss, what is your name? You seem quite odd to me. You would not be the first to think so. But avert your eyes. I will not have you staring over long. Let's get used to it. I'll be watching you. We want no trouble here. Perhaps your skull was cracked worse than Mother thought. A fine gift. You have my thanks. I am grateful. Tis thoughtful indeed. I'm wondering, Morrigan. Do you believe in the Maker? Certainly not. I've no primitive fear of the moon, such that I must place my faith in tales so that I may sleep at night. But this can't all be an accident. Spirits, magic, all these wondrous things around us, both dark and light. You know these things exist. The fact of their existence does not presuppose an intelligent design by some absentee father figure. So it is all random then. A happy coincidence that we are all here. Attempting to impose order over chaos is futile. Nature is, by its very nature, chaotic. I don't believe that. I believe we have a purpose. All of us. Yours, apparently, being to bother me. Though it matters little now, I will die soon enough. This is a proud and powerful creature, trapped as prey for the Darkspawn. If you cannot see a use for him, I suggest releasing him for mercy's sake alone. Mercy? I wouldn't have expected that from you. I would also suggest that Alistair take his place in the cage. Yes, that's what I would have expected. I suggest you leave me to my fate. Oh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hare is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. Maybe, but that is not the point. The dirty mongrel can have this back, there, and tell him not to do it again. I just did. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Oh, he's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. So, you truly do not believe in any sort of higher power? It has been bothering you, I see. No, I do not. Must I? What do you believe happens to you after you die, then? Nothing? I do not go to sit by the Maker's side, if that's what you mean. Only those who are worthy are brought to the Maker's side. So many other sad souls are left to wander in the void, hopeless and forever lost. And what evidence of this have you? <laughs> I see only spirits, no wandering ghosts of wicked disbelievers. It must be so sad to look forward to nothing, to feel no love and seek no reward in the afterlife. Yes, the anguish tears at me so. 
You have seen through me to my sad, sad core. Now you're simply mocking me. You notice? It appears your perceptive powers know no bounds. What have you there? A mirror? It is... just the same as the mirror which Flemeth smashed on the ground so long ago. It is incredible that you found one so like it. I am uncertain what to say. You must wish something in return, certainly. I have never received a gift. Not one that did not also come with a price attached. Perhaps there is a price to pay yet, hmm? <laughs> if so, it is deserved. Thank you. Truly. I have something for you. They didn't have anything better. Tis a ring. Now before you get any foolish notions, let me explain. Flemeth once gave me the ring because it allowed her to find me no matter where I went, in case I was ever captured by hunters. I disabled its power as soon as we left the wilds. Recently, however, I thought to change it. Now, I will be able to find whoever wears it instead. It is not given out of sentimentality. I believe you were too important to risk. If you were captured, this ring would allow the rest of us to find you quickly. Flemeth used to say that t'was a link between us, one that I presumed worked both ways. I never tested it, but I doubt she would have lied over such a thing, so it would mean I am linked to you as much as you to I. I do not know. As I said, I never tested it. Perhaps. I have no desire to see us part company so soon. Not unless we wish to, that is. Do not read more into it than is there. You have supplied me with equipment. Certainly this is not so very different, is it? Now you are mocking me. Do you wish the ring or not? I am tempted to simply keep it. You are welcome. Perhaps it will be useful someday. I assume you are actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly? I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. It seems likely, does it not? In an animal form, a babe could easily be spirited away and raised as Flemeth's own. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another, and Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. I sense a hint of judgment in your words. Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. I shall take this as a compliment. Was it meant as such? Oh? How interesting. You agree that love is a weakness, then? Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. There. I am glad you agree. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? You are already on my good side, such as it is. Or do you seek something else? Something more... intimate? Oh, good to know that. Let me see. I would expect favor to come with a price. Perhaps you would be willing to pay a compliment. Is that too much? Hmm? I suppose stating the obvious will have to do. Very well, then. You are on my good side. Best watch your step that you don't fall off. What's this? <laughs> it is a rather odd discussion you seem to desire, leaning in so closely. 
Not unless you stop. is cold in my tent all alone so you shall come to my tent but whatever shall we do in that tiny little space together while we wait for it to warm good then let us waste no more time with foolish talk I see the stories they tell of Grey Warden endurance are not exaggerated. <laughs> Indeed there are. The unanswered question, of course, is whether the endurance exists because of the taint within you, or because the Grey Wardens are by nature so very healthy. I enjoy the thought that tis a little of both. Natural prowess? driven by a darker side. That is entirely up to you. Simply know that I have no designs on your independence. I wish only to do what I desire, and if that coincides with what you desire, then so be it. And should you decide not to continue our misadventure, then so be it. Very simple, is it not? Then we should get along marvelously. <laughs> Come then, let us be off before the others begin to stare. <laughs> so, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. <laughs> We're in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Ah, such a romantic, I see. Hmm, perhaps? Shall I consult my capricious nature and divine an answer for you? Come now, you'll make Alistair blush. Am to be indulged? How exciting! Let me think. Very well. It shall be as you wish, voracious as your appetite may be. <laughs> Why, yes sir, I always follow orders swiftly and to the letter. I am to be indulged. How exciting. Let me think. I say not. You are denied. <laughs> Another time, my sweet. For now, I shall leisurely pretend disinterest. 